Hi, welcome, welcome. I want to welcome my guest, Richard Young Lord Frierson. I'm so honored to have you here. And I want to thank everyone that's on live now for coming. My name is Margaret Wilshire, and this is a video podcast, Lifestyle by Design, Not Default, which is a podcast series that interviews individuals and shares their amazing and inspiring and empowering stories, stories of challenges and stories of victories of those who are living on purpose. So, Young Lord, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm honored to be here. And uh, for those of you who are not seeing me clearly, uh, seeing fuzz or anything, it's all my fault. <laughs> and I apologize. <laughs> but hopefully you guys can uh, hear my words and uh, feel my passion, you know, with what I'm saying. So, uh, yes, thank you for be being here and joining me today. So, Richard, you are a platinum status hip hop and R&B producer. Can you tell me, can you tell me some of the artists that you worked with? Sure, I've worked with, um, well, I worked with Diddy, Beyonce, Ice Cube, um, all of the bad boy artists like Faith Evans, Locks, Mace, uh, Black Rob, 112. Uh, I worked with New Edition, I worked with um, DMX, I worked with Little Kim, I worked with um, Genuine, I worked with, gosh, just uh, so many people. I've been blessed to have a nice career where I've been um, full of constant uh, good people that, that love music, you know, it's been a great ride. That's awesome. Do you have a favorite artist? Is that a bad thing to ask? Can you answer that? Yeah, I can answer that. My favorite artist I worked with was LL Cool J. <laughs> and the reason why, why he is the best in my mind is because, um, uh, wow, he's, a, he's like a super professional. And um, I actually have a great story about LL Cool J. When I found out he was working on a new album, he was working on the 10 album, you know, I wanted to work with him and I said, wow, I need an angle more than just the music. So I picked up a book. He had a book about his life and I read the book and it was a good book. You know, his brother been through a lot of things. What I noticed is how strong of a presence his grandmother was in his life. So I said, like, wow, he never did a song about his grandmother. So I uh, connected with some friends who were writers and we put together a song about his grandmother and I set up a meeting with him and um, he came in and I told him the idea in the song. He loved it. He was like, pay this guy whatever he wants. You know, he was, <laughs> he was really cool. But that wasn't what made him great. What made him great is that we decided to put uh, Casey and Jojo on this record to sing the hook. And um, we flew out to LA and when we went into the studio, these guys were, they were drunk and high, you know, whatever you could think of, they were, they were that. And they were very, um, they, they weren't trying to listen to me, you know, every, every bit of direction I would give them, they would, uh, you know, fight me on it. And, um, you know, LL pulled me to the side and he said, you know, I'm going to teach you how to work with people like this. You know, he said, you give them a little bit of what they want, then they do a little bit of what you want. And he's like, just do it until you get everything that you need to do. And um, wow. he, he taught me a great deal about, you know, just um, dealing with people. And for that, you know, I will always appreciate, you know, and the fact that, uh, that that song was included on the album and um a few months later his grandmother passed so wow. i was able to help him express his love for his grandmother while she was still here before she passed so i, I felt really good about that that's an amazing story very um heartfelt so yeah. i have another question for you you were the youngest bad boy producer ever signed to puffy you were 16 years old when you were right. signed, and that's about the time I met you. I think maybe a year later. That's how long I've known you. Yep. Can you tell me about the journey to being signed and landing this deal 
with Puffy at the time? Um, it was the journey. It was um, just, I guess, from starting music period. Um, yes. Like what, what were the events that kind of led up to that, him signing you as a bad boy hitman at the age of 16? Oh. Okay. It was, um, <laughs> it was funny. I was at school one day and uh, I was having uh, lunch and these girls were talking about Puff Daddy and Craig Mack and uh, <laughs> Slaving Your Ear just came out. It was a huge hit. And, um, you know, these were pretty girls. And, uh, I was like, wow, this you know, this Puff Daddy guy. I heard his name a few times, you know. <laughs> so I was like, I think I need to get down with him. So uh I, I went from uh, the lunch table, they had pay phones in um the lunchroom. So I went to the pay phone, I called information, got the number to the office, and um this is when they first opened up. So the girl didn't know she wasn't supposed to give me any information. And um, <laughs> <laughs> she slipped up and she gave me a name. I said, to her, I said, you know, I'm 16. You know, I'm a producer. Who can I talk to? You know, who do I, what division? Who, who do I need to talk to? And she said, um, I think you need to speak to Harv. And then after that, I was stalking Harv. And um, <laughs> I uh, ran out of quarters. I had one quarter left. And I called one of my brothers and I said, look, call this guy Harv. And, um, you know, set up a meeting with me. This this is the guy we, I need to talk to at Bad Boy. And uh, by the time I got out of school, I had a meeting set up with Bad Boy the next day. And um, I had a meeting with Harv. And Harv is a, a really good poker face guy. You know, you can't tell his emotions, you know. Really cool. And uh, I, I didn't think he liked my music. I, I didn't think uh, that I would ever speak to them again. But the next day, got a call from Puff's office saying that he wanted to meet me. And um, so then I went to meet Puff and uh, my Catholic school uniform and everything. Wow. And, uh, he didn't like my music either. He didn't like my <laughs> music. But he liked the fact that I made it into his office. Mm, okay. And he was like, we're going to put you on on-the-job training. And okay. that started my career from there. So it was the fact that I uh, showed the initiative to... Um, to make it happen. It was that, you know, I pushed forward. <laughs> that, that made it happen because it wasn't my music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me get this clear. You heard girls talking about Puff and Craig Mack. Right. Um, you got on a pay phone. You used your quarters. You called Bad Boy. And by some stroke of luck, you got Harv's direct number. You landed an interview with an appointment with Harv. And then the next day, you landed an appointment with Puffy himself. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. what if that, were you um, making beats before that? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. How long? I was before? making beats um, for about two years. Okay. And how I started creating period. Um, it's another funny story. I was my first week of high school. I uh, was coming home from school and I met this girl in school. And she was a very pretty girl. And I was walking her to the bus. And after she left on the bus, this guy came up to me, grown-ass man. He says, uh, hey, is that your girlfriend? You know, so I'm lying. I'm like, yeah. You know, and uh, he's like, well, you have great taste, you know. And uh, he said, are you in the music? I said, no. And he said, well, here's my card. I own a studio around the corner. If you ever want to come through, you're welcome to come and uh the guy was actually a legitimate player in the music business okay and they they let me sit in sessions and from there i got the bug you know okay it was really some meant to be stuff you know it was, it was really cool okay wow it seems like you almost seems like you have a guardian angel with you there but you oh, are I do. i'm still here <laughs> <laughs> i know i have a guardian angel yeah. But you were also prepared. So it was a little bit of being prepared, what they call, you know, like you got lucky. You were a little bit prepared when the opportunity presented itself. Well, I think, you know, I don't even think I was prepared, really. Looking back, I think that um, I um, took advantage 
and, and helped create the opportunity, you know, by just trying, you know, like, um, I, I guess as a young kid, and I still try and have this, this energy, but there's like, uh, I feel like there's no wrong answer. You know, you, you try something, if it works, it works great. If it doesn't work, then, then great. You know, you just, but you got to try you know if you don't try you won't move forward uh so just like i said i made that call with bad boy right well a few months prior to that i happened to be in atlanta and um since i was in atlanta i was like well i'm gonna get in touch with dallas austin at darp you know they were he was pretty big producer at the time so i called uh i called them just like i called bad boy and I set up a meeting with this guy, Kevin Wales, who later on will go on to be 112's manager. And uh, when I got to the office, Kevin had left. He, like, he just left, you know. <laughs> so I never got to meet with Kevin. It didn't work out, but it was cool, you know. So it was like, you know, next time, hey, I did with Bad Boy, and it worked out, you know. Just put the, put the effort in it and, uh, you know, try to move forward. Yeah. Okay. So the meat of our conversation tonight is daring to dream big. And um, when I thought of this topic, I especially thought of you because ever since I've known you, you've always dreamed big. You know, I remember we would have conversations and you would tell me about these dreams and then it might have been a year or two later, but you were off doing it. I mean, I remember one specific dream, I probably won't mention, but it had to do with a certain actress in Hollywood on a hit, <laughs> a, hit, a hit comedy series at the time. And you were like, I'm gonna meet her one day. And you went out there and you met her, you know? I, I won't say what happened after, but I mean, that was pretty big to me. And since I've known you, you've always been like that. You've always been passionate about music. And tell me, so, how is it that you dream big, you dream these big dreams, and then you take action and make it happen? Mm. I guess one thing that I'm um, blessed with is I've seen um, proof that dreams come true. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt in my mind that we can dream and that we can accomplish. And um, on several different levels from several different people, I have seen proof of uh, overcoming all kinds of obstacles and, and doing it. And um, I think that allows me to, um, to really look for the best in life and to not settle for anything less and, and go after it, go after it. And um, some of the examples of proof uh, that I've seen are like, um, you know, my my parents. You know, my dad. He's um, he's a hustler. You know, he he had a certain vision for um, you know how many houses he wanted to own. You know, stuff like that. And he did what he had to do to make that a reality. And he would um, study for. Um, different subjects in the car. He, he would tape himself on cassette and um, play him while we would be driving, you know, for himself, but we would be in there. But I got to see his habits of, um, you know, what he did to prepare himself to, to do things. And then, you know, working uh, with Puff, you know, that was some magical stuff that was going on there. And, and that guy is a big dreamer and he, um, you know, his stuff really uh, came to life uh, despite any adversity. And Puff had more adversity than anyone I know, you know, and uh, he was able to get through it. Um, and it was his belief that helped him do it. Then also, I got to um, uh, get really close with uh, Kenny Gamble of Philadelphia International Records. He's like, um, you know, one of my second father is he uh, a big dreamer and uh he accomplished everything he wanted to do in music and more but also on the real estate side he owns like half of south philadelphia right now he's he's um really enjoying what he's doing and he's also like involved in the community and all this stuff was just uh visions of 
what he wanted to do back in the 90s and now it's happening, you know, and I, I got to see the progress of it. And then also I um, uh, met B- Barry Gordy and um, he's a big dreamer also <laughs> and he's accomplished so much. So I, I just know um, that without the shadow, without any shadow of a doubt that we as a people have the power to, um, you know, have a big dream and, and, and see it through and accomplish it. And not because of luck, uh, not because of, you know, just, you know, being in the right place at the right time, but because we decide to, you know, I I really feel like that, that's, uh, that we can accomplish that. So tell me a little bit about Dreaming Big. I want to explore that just a little bit because I had a phone conversation the other day with a friend. And she had recently set some goals for herself. And um, she said, you know, when I get through these goals, I'm going to dream big goals after. The goals that she had set for herself that she's working on now, she feels like they're goals that she should already be working on. Things like maybe improving in her career, you know, um, maybe exercising. I think exercising was one of them, you know, stepping up a bit in her career. Also, um, Some other things that pretty much involved um, taking personal initiative and developing a little bit. And then she said to me, and then after I do these things that I should be doing, I'm going to dream big goals. You know, I'm going to dream big dreams. So what exactly, oh, I hope we didn't lose him. He is on his cell phone. Can you hear me? Okay, the picture went out. It's okay. I mean, it's technology. It happens. So I'm here, guys. I'm not going nowhere. (laughs) (laughs) So... Tell, describe to me a big dream and daring to dream this really big dream. Uh, we lost him. So I am sure that he is going to reconnect. He is um, making this happen on his cell phone, which is really nice. And how many out there, I guess I can like interact. I see we have Leo and Ryan, Daria, Gabriel, Mike, Danny, and Michael on here. Do any of you have any questions that you'd like to ask while he's back? Hey, Richard, your mic. Are you back with us? I'm back. I'm sorry. It's okay. So are you are you in a good spot now? Me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hear you. Me? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So right. the question, if you don't remember, was, you know, what's a big dream? something other than what we should be doing in our personal lives? Mm. A big dream is anything that, uh, to me, to me, a big dream is anything that makes you a little nervous when you dream it. (laughs) You know, like uh, right now, one of my dreams that I'm working on is um, for the next two, next three months, I'm going to cut down my body fat so I can get a, 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 a four pack, you know, four okay. pack. or even, a, you know, I'll settle for a two pack, but I want, you know, I don't, you know, I need a six pack. I'll take a four pack. And um, to do that, it's a big dream because I'm, I have so many bad habits and um, it's, uh, it's, it's a big dream. So, <laughs> but for different people, it's different things, you know, like, um, but it's whatever you think you can do plus more, you know, that, that you need to have that, you know, that thing to drive you. That's like, when you accomplish it, like you're going to be so happy. You know? okay. Should it scare you? Um, it should excite you. Okay. Okay. So we should have a dream that drives us it's, and it excites you and excites us. Okay. So tell me, you mentioned um, some folks before. Um, One of the guys, Kenny Gamble, you said is like a second dad. Do you believe in having mentors? What do you think about having mentors? That's the only way to go. You got to. You got to. It, it, you know, cuts your learning curve. um, 
you need people that you can identify with, with the struggle, you know, because you're going to go through some things. That helps a lot, you know. That helps a lot. So you definitely need to get a mentor for whatever you want to do. If it's, you know, making T-shirts or something, you know, you got to, um, it's important that you create a relationship where you can, you know, just vibe with somebody and, and uh, that has some experience. Okay. What is, what has been one of the greatest lessons besides LL Cool J um, that you have learned from, directly from a mentor? Can you tell us maybe one or share two? Wow, so many. Um, what comes to your mind as the, that has been the most impactful in your career or even your life? Wow. Um, um, the biggest one, I think, was from Barry Gordy. And he said some metaphysical stuff to me, it felt like, you know, but it wasn't, but he, what he said was, you know, you know, I would ask him how, how was it uh, dealing with the, um, you know, the struggles. He was a black man in the the sixties and fifties developing a huge empire. You know, he dealt with a lot of uh, issues, you know, um, you know, but he says the, the biggest thing was for him was to, uh, make sure that he was happy, you know, through all costs, you know, whatever it costs, he had to be happy so he can think clearly to, to be on the offensive, okay. you know, and, and that makes so much sense because when you are sad, you shut yourself off from um, different uh, resolutions, you know, um, different uh, things that can help you out. So you, you need to, uh, you know, do what you got to do to keep your spirits up so you can see opportunities when they come. You know, you got to be ready. So your happiness is very, very important. And um, then I think a second thing I learned. Um, there's a woman named uh, Deanna Williams who is, she's a professional, um, uh, like, a, what is she? She's a um, media coach. She's a media coach. And she's one of my boy's um, mothers, you know, and she, she adopted me a long time ago too. And uh, what I learned from her is uh, to communicate. You know, we have to be good communicators for people to assist us, to, to know what, what it is we're doing to assist us to, um, to become part of our dream, to, you know, to, um, um, to, to, yeah, we have to communicate. We have to be able to clearly see our vision and communicate it to other people. That's very important because you have to, um, for big undertakings, you, you're going to need support. You're going to need help from people. You're going to need an army. You're going to need a team. And you're going to need to clearly communicate your vision and your expectations and everything like that to the, the members on your team. So communication is key. You have to know how to, to uh, communicate and express yourself so that people, you know, will know who you are and can be, trust you, you know. Okay. So, yeah. okay. So besides having a mentor to kind of help you um, to cut the learning curve and get you results quicker, what else do you think is very important on the path to, you know, kind of living your dreams and getting results? Uh. By the way, we have a comment there for you. I'll just give you a little comment by the comments, by the way. You know, um, Mike said, very interesting topic. Leo just said, you know, ask and you shall receive. And he said to tell you that was a great point you just made. Yeah, I think um, outside of mentors, what do you think was a question, right? Um, yes, what else is important? 
the desire to um no wait, you know, there's so many different things. I, I think um what, what do you think? This I I think you see, like in my life, you know, I've been blessed. I've been, you know, I'm I'm successful at what I do, but you know, I still am you know, as you go to one realm, you always want to go to the next realm, to the next realm. And I'm I'm in that process in my life. And I think one of the um, things I'm learning now is to um, to let go and allow the process to happen. And um, I'm a, a person who's I work hard, you know, I'm, I'm on it. I'm like, OK, I'm trying to figure things out. I'm trying to do this I'm trying to do that and I what I'm learning is to um you know trust the universe you know that everything is going to uh fall into the the right place so and I will see the opportunities as they come you know I think um uh, what they call it the process of allowing you know I think that's like, very important you know like to, flow uh, so like flow, yeah, to, very zen let, kind yeah, of approach? To, to let things flow, to let things flow. Um, and then also, this is another thing, this is just big, um, but I talked about your team, about communicating to them. It's important that you have a team <laughs> to help you do whatever it is you want to do because um, it's... Um, just take me as an example. Um, I, my whole life has been, um, well, not all of it, but a lot of the blessings that I've got, I've gotten from listening to other pe people. Like uh, after that guy let me go to the studio, I realized I needed a machine called SP 1200. It was two thousand dollars. I didn't think my parents had. It. I didn't even ask. You know, I didn't know that that was rich. You know, be rich people had two thousand dollars. So I um, was uh, talking to. Uh, I became friends with an artist who got a deal, and he told me, he said, "Well, if you come up with a thousand dollars, I'll give you the other thousand dollars, and you just give me some beats." So I said, "Okay, great." So now I'm gonna come up with a thousand dollars, right? So I, uh, I didn't know, but what I did was that I, I started asking people. I started asking my, my group of friends, my people I sat with, you know, whatever. How can I come up with a thousand dollars? Now these are kids just like me, you know, these are kids just like me. And um, one of the kids said to me, he said, well, look, our school has 2000 kids. How can you get a dollar from every kid in the school? <laughs> I said, yo, you're right. So then I started asking people, how can I get a dollar from every kid in the school, right? Because I still didn't know the answer. And then another guy said to me, he said, uh, why don't you sell raffles? Why don't you sell, sell raffle tickets, right? And I, I said, bam, I took that idea. I printed up 2,000 raffle tickets. And <laughs> I would sell raffles to everybody. You know, it's... Um, Last year, I went to my parents' house and I pulled out a box of some old stuff. And I came across this letter that um, this girl had wrote me in the ninth grade. And I'm reading this letter and it's what you would expect a 14-year-old girl to, to write. You know, she's like, you know, I'm Sagittarius, you know, watch <laughs> TV, you know, all, all this just young stuff. But what made me smile was at the end of her letter, she said, um... She said, I will uh, buy one of your raffles, but I won't sell them, right? <laughs> and it made me laugh, it made me feel good because I really like this girl. You know, I really like, I was trying to get with this girl like with my whole heart and soul, you know? <laughs> but I, I still pressed her to sell my raffle, <laughs> not just to buy it, but to sell it, you know? So I was like, wow, you know? <laughs> I was, I was like, wow, I was, I was really aggressive on that. End. <laughs> and um, I, um, so I executed on other people's ideas. And I always, you know, even now when I do something, I try and keep a team of people around me um, because I know that everybody has off days, you know, where you're not thinking so creatively 
creatively. You're not, you're not, you're not on. This stuff is not coming to you. But that is no excuse not to move forward. You have a team around you and you bounce off of their energy and y'all help each other grow, you know. So uh, I believe in the um, Thinking Grow Rich book, they call it a mastermind. mastermind. You know, it's, it's very important that you have that to um, that that will help you grow so much. Because if I didn't have it, we wouldn't be on this call right now. You know. OK. So having a, a mastermind group in addition to having um you know, drive and is helpful. Um, and also mentors. Sometimes mentors can also fall into. Um, Men yeah. yeah, the mastermind. Yeah, they can you gotta have mentors that. and also mentees. Okay. You know, like uh, when I was, you know, 19, I decided I was gonna have some interns, you know, and um, <laughs> the kids not much younger than me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I had, I had interns and uh you know throughout my life I maybe had about 30 interns <laughs> and I I still keep in touch with majority of them and they all do different things and and uh it's you know it's, I have so many blessings from them and and they've gotten blessings from me so it's like a, a cycle you know so supporting that you know you help your team win you know and then they will in turn help you win and I, I'm, it, you don't know how it's going to happen. For example, one of my old interns, you know, she she was working for Delta Airlines. So I was her companion. I flying free everywhere, you know. Uh, up until she got married, I was flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> then um, another of my interns worked for the Marriott. So when I would fly, I would stay at a hotel for this time. <laughs> you know, then... Um, you know, one of my other interns, he became, he's a personal trainer and he trained me for free. I mean, I was looking like the Hulk when I was working out for, for free, you know, this guy would not take my money, you know, and it, it, it's, uh, that's just um, some of the fruits of the seeds that I, I, I was sowing with, with my internships, trying to help them, you know, so um, have mentors and have mentees. You got to help people and I'll come right back to you. We have um, Latoya who just commented and she said, you are the definition of dreaming big. Um, so I want to, <laughs> I want to ask, I want, I want to ask you about a time that was one of the most challenging times for you in your journey. If you can share that and tell us how you were able to deal with that and bounce back. And what did you learn? Yeah. Um, yeah, I had, I had a rough time when um, when I turned 30 years old. It was like, um, uh, let's see, um, it was it was a rough it was a rough time. Before 30 years old, I was living a uh, very uh, spoiled life. You know, <laughs> I guess because I started so young. You know, I, and it was success right after success and. You know, that's all I knew. And um, actually, that's all I still know. I refuse to accept anything else. <laughs> but um, uh, when I turned 30, uh, it's like the perfect storm happened. You know, the, uh, it was uh, 2008. And uh, uh, I know you guys remember, you, you hear stuff about the stock market crashing and, and things like that. Stock market crashing and then the um the market crashing in real estate so let me tell you right <laughs> i was one of those guys that got caught out there i was very heavily invested in the um the stocks um and i also had a lot of different properties um in atlanta georgia that i was um working on and flipping and what happened um first the, the stocks went out and I, I lost a, a ton of money. So that, that made me, um, I wasn't liquid. I wasn't able to do my normal moves. So I tried, to, you know, it's like, well, I still had some properties that I was flipping that makes a lot of bread. But shortly after the stocks crashed, the market crashed, especially in Atlanta, Georgia, there was a big problem with appraisers appraising properties more than they were valued. So the values uh, were like cut in, um, you know, in, in half. And um, I lost a lot of money. I went from being, you know, up several hundred thousand to being 
below several hundred thousand. So um, but, um it, it was a time where I questioned myself, where I didn't, um, but I don't think I trusted myself, like the decisions I made, you know, just, you know, things I would do. Uh, but what helped me out of it was um, I always wrote, I kept a notebook and kept a journal that uh, I wrote down, like, you know, what I was doing, what I'm thinking, stuff like that. So I was looking through my journals to figure out how I got into this thing, you know, because it was, it was a few other things in addition to, you know, those two things I just spoke about, but uh, it was primarily financial and I think a relationship I was in didn't work out and, um, you know, just a a perfect storm of things. So when I looked through my um, uh, journal, you know, I I got to, um, see some other things uh like uh some people that i met that that really dropped some jewels on me and i was like you know what i got this i can i can handle this you know i um i can get out of this so i created a plan and um executed it and you know got myself back on my feet you know within the next year you know so it was um it was a rough time but it taught me like um, it taught me how I got to know my strength. You know, you don't really know your strength until you're forced to actually use it. You know, <laughs> and I think that I was uh, forced to see that you know I'm I'm a strong guy and and that uh, you know I can think clearly and and handle situations. And um, it was it was a great thing for me. I, I grew so much from it. You know, uh, as a person. And um, the, some of the lessons I learned that helped me get out of it um, was, um, let me see, I'm trying to think. Um, the the first one I saw was to um, to have a plan. I, I had to have a plan. And I, when, when these things happened, I, I realized that I didn't have a plan, so I had to create a new plan. Um, and then um, there's a another OG, this guy named Clarence Avant. He um, he's a guy I talk to from time to time, and, and he asked me. He always would say that I have more than I think I do. You know, I have more. Um, you have more than you think. I have more uh, resources. I have more. Um, everything so when I saw that it made me think well what actually what actually do I have at my disposal from everything and we really do have more than we think you know we we really think about it hey you know we have this relationship we have this uh and then once you start looking at that stuff you mean you'd be like well if I use this relationship I can get capital from here I can do this I can do that you really kind of get to see with um what you can do with what you already have, you know, and you always have something as long as you breathe in, you always have something. So I, um, that was a good thing. That was a good thing. And, uh, after that, the plan and then looking at my assets, as far as relationships, uh, knowledge and, um, um, yeah, just pretty much that's it. Then, um, execute, you know, I had to, had to execute. I had to go all out with my plan. And um, and then I just, I knew that I can do it. I knew that, um, that it wasn't nothing I couldn't handle. So even when there would be setbacks, I, I look at them as um, uh, lessons to be learned. Like, all right, so how am I going to get around this? What am I supposed to learn from this? I didn't really see it as something stopping me, you know. So I just kept it going until uh, so I got what I needed to get. Okay. So Leo says over here, he appreciates your honesty and he's quoting you on something. You don't know your strength until you're forced to use it. Again, Latoya said, that's so true. Mm. That's why there should never be a barrier. Um, so you came up with a plan, you, you sat back, you looked at what was happening, you decided to come up with a plan, you thought outside the box, 
because that's kind of what you did. You started, you know, looking at relationships and seeing what was available. Then it sounded like you practice a bit of gratitude there. You realized in looking at everything that you really did have a lot in terms of even relationships, you know, and then you executed, you stepped forward, and that's how you were able to respond to an unfortunate circumstance instead of reacting to it and letting fear allow you to um, fall, fall short. Okay, sounds good. I'm impressed, you know, a lot of us get caught up in our fears. Um, so now that you told us about one of the worst moments in one of what seems like one of the worst moments, but it was actually an opportunity for growth. Um, what was one of the better moments, one of the more happier moments where you, you know, achieved something and it, you know, shed a different light, it, maybe a couple of veils i like to say you know like the veil was removed from my eyes and there was also well, growth when i when i executed when i executed my goal you know and it's it's um you know like i put together a plan and and i executed it and it was some really some bullshit that i thought of you know and i was able to uh put a plan together and um and I executed once. Once I got that and was able to uh, take care of that stuff I had, and you know, you know, all that stuff, I felt I felt great. I felt like a new lease on life. I felt like, wow, you know, like yo, this is this is good, you know. It, it, so that success made me. It made me happy. It made me. Um, it made me feel like. Uh, you know, un unstoppable, you know, <laughs> it made me feel good. So that, 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 you know, quote unquote failure, uh, you know, brought me to a success and it has uh, colored everything that I do now, you know, with, whenever I make a move, I have to be a hundred percent with it. And um, I, I have to, um, yeah, I have, to, I have to go for it, you know, and um, if something um, doesn't go my way or, uh, you know, I adjust and keep it moving because I know something is going to work, you know? Okay. So, can you tell me who is the biggest inspiration in your life? Hmm. Um, the biggest inspiration in my life right now. Uh, inspiration on what level? Any level, any level um, at all. I mean, who, you know, when you're around them, they, you know, give you extra energy and they, they renew your spirit and make you want to do or try new things or, you know, just who inspires well, you? Uh, well, I think everybody inspires me. You inspire me, you know. Um, you, you, you're you doing exactly what... Uh, what I'm doing and that inspires me as far as you know feeling um, identifying your passion and going after it um, and I think a, another person uh, is a good friend of mine named Oscar Days he um, he was a manager he had a group called the Barrio Boys and he um, got into real estate investing and uh, he's very successful right now I mean beyond successful and this is something he's studied he, he you know and he executed and now things are just like the the momentum is with him it's just flowing with him and um that stuff it, it makes me so happy it, it uh I, I love seeing it so it, all of the happiness and joy that i see in others help me uh inspires me to make more of it in my life you know? okay so now we are at 8.50, and I am going to open it up. We have questions here. <laughs> I have to scroll back. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to ask you a fun question, too. Um, what, I'm going to ask you a couple of fun questions before I get to the questions. Um, so tell me, what is your favorite food? Jerk chicken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Um, what is your favorite song? All time or right now? <laughs> all, I mean, whatever, whatever comes to your mind. Um, Let's say all time. What's your all time favorite song? Wow, that's a bad question because there's so many great songs. But um, some of the songs that um, songs make me feel emotions. So it depends on what I'm trying to feel like. But some songs that really make me happy are like um, uh, wow, um, bring so many. I say. Uh, Michael Jackson off the wall, uh, you know, rock with you. And I'm a big Michael Jackson fan, so any 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 one of his songs. Okay. What is your favorite movie? Wow. Um, Coming to America. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's my daughter. That's Raven's favorite movie, actually. Um, yeah. And tell me, what is your favorite app to use and what type of phone do you have? I have an iPhone 6 and my favorite app is Monopoly. I play that all the time. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I, I see the link here between the property. So do you, does it help yeah. you like hone in on your skills there? Your real estate? Not skills? at all, but it's, it's just <laughs> good fun. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. First question I have here is from Mike. And his question is, how do you deal with the negativity when someone is trying to get in the way of your success? I remove them, you know, or I ignore them. You know, we don't have control over a lot of things in our life. But one thing we do have control over is our thoughts. And uh, I try and, you know, direct my thoughts to different things. You know, I brainwash myself a lot. It's very important to do so. Okay. The next question we have here from Leo. What is the current state of the music industry for music producers? It's rough. It's rough. I, um, the budgets are lower. Everything is different now than it was. But there's always an exception. There's still people making millions and millions of dollars. So you just got to believe that you're an exception and do the best to uh, give yourself enough chance to be heard, you know, so that can be um, realized. Okay. They say that the um, the music industry right now on the Internet is the Wild West. That's what I've heard. You well, know, People don't want to pay for music, you know, but that's a whole nother, nother story, you know. <laughs> Okay, Danny Medina, with how much the internet is evolving and how much social media is being used, where do you see the music industry going? Would a starter need to sort of hunt for a label or would going independent and do things from the ground up be a better approach in today's conditions? Mm. I have no clue. Um, I honestly thank God that I'm not starting in this period of time because it is crazy. Um, I, I don't know what I would do. You know, right now I'm lucky uh, uh, because I have relationships that I've been for 20 years and over, you know, so it's like I make phone calls and people pick up. So it's a little different world. But I would say um, – you, you work with somebody who has those relationships because relationships are the key, you know, be able to press a button and make something happen. So uh, before you find a label, before you find, you find somebody who has relationships to help you navigate those systems and to turn your, you know, creativity into money. Okay. Um, okay. And then we have Mark who wants to know if you can recommend any books that were helpful to you on your journey from then until now. All right. Um, yeah, a few good books. One is called uh, Thick Face, Black Heart. I'm not familiar with the author. I don't remember. But that book is very important. It tells you, you know, you have to have a thick face and, and not um, care about the criticism that's thrown at you or other people's 
objectives, you know, and you got to do what you got to do despite any adversity. That's what that book taught me. Um, another good book is um, Think and Grow Rich. Um, another good book, I would say, is um, The Dream Giver. Uh, I forgot who wrote that book, but that book is a great, great, great book. It um, it lets you know that this is uh, I can't even explain that book, but you have to read it. It, it will help. Um, it will help you get issues that you'll go through, and and know that you know sometimes it just happens, but you'll get through it. Very comforting book. Okay. Richard, we're losing you here in the dark. I don't know if you have a light in your car. Can you hear me? Hello? Uh, yeah. Yeah, let me turn. Yeah, yeah. But I could like gradually just see the sun. <laughs> the sun just kind of uh, like gradually faded. Is it better? Yeah, it's a little better. So I I just want to like send these. Oh yeah. So Mark did it. Mark did it a little bit for me. I was going to um, type it out, but he typed it out. So thick face, black heart, think and grow right. rich, and the dream giver. Yes, Mark, you have it correct. Mike yeah. wants to know what's your next venture, Mister Young Lord. Uh, my next venture is in real estate investing. So I'm um, purchasing houses and, um, you know, flipping them, similar like to TV shows and stuff like that, you know. And uh, it, it's fun for me. It's like uh, something new, something exciting. And it, um, you know, it's like music where I can be creative and, and make things happen out of nothing, you know. So I'm I'm really excited about it. Okay. And I was having, I'm going to ask a question on behalf of one of my friends who's in attendance here. We were talking earlier today, as a matter of fact, about teams. And you talked a lot about having a really good team. And he's someone, he's a film producer and editor, and he wears a lot of hats. And he was talking about the importance of having a team. And I had mentioned, you know, that you want he said that someone told him it's actually really easy to put a team together. And I had mentioned to him that you have to do a little bit of due diligence, you know, um, and not just put any old team together because sometimes you know, not having the right people on your team could set you back a few steps. So what do you say about how do you get a good team? How do you round up, you know, um, people to be on your team and select the right people? Um, well, I select the right people through vibe. You know, I go, if I feel that energy, then I'll go with it. Um, but as far as getting the players on a team, I, um, uh, hmm. I get them from all random places. You know, I don't, I don't care. It's like, uh. Yeah, you just get people and you see who fits and see who doesn't, you know, and, and just don't be scared to uh, cut a person off if they don't, don't fit on the vision. Yeah. So Leo said, he actually is on here responding. He said they must have ambition, hustle, integrity, and talent. Do you agree with that? Yeah, but some of them don't have to have ambition. No. The audio is breaking up, Richard. Because, like, uh, I'm just one, two, one, two. I can hear you now. All right. Uh, the the people they don't have to have ambition. You have ambition. You know, like some people are like uh, meant to, you know, do certain things. So as long as long as you reach step that, that's helping you go forward, you know, it's a good fit. Okay. You know, yeah, because you need somebody to be the secretary, right? Uh, uh, you know, something like that, you know. 
Okay. And you want the best, the person who wants to be the best secretary there. That would definitely be Exactly. Help. Exactly. They, you don't want them trying to have your job. <laughs> so if you can, um, before we go, leave any last minute words. Oh, actually, what all my guests do before they leave, three actionable steps. Three that everyone who's on and everyone who will see this video, this video will take on a life on its own on the internet after, you know, it's in, it's in YouTube. So three actionable steps that anyone who wants to dream big and live life on their terms can take right now within the next 24 hours. Hey, um, first thing, write down your dream. Got me? Yep. So write it down. One, write it down. Right. Write it down. Second thing. Um, uh, learn how to clearly, you know, or be able to communicate it and express it to other people. Um. Dang, I got four things actually. All right, so we'll take third, more. We'll take. We'll definitely all right. take more. Then after that, get some people who are in sympathy. Right, get get your team together. Right, and then, then once you get the right people on board, who have the right spirit, you know, then you come up with a plan. I mean, you you know, in the UX, you know, you come up with a plan to execute. Okay. So is number three putting your team together? Yep. So number three, put your team together. Well, you know, I guess you can mix number one and two together. Like once you write it down, it'll help you communicate it. It'll help become clear, you know. And then once you get your team together, you know, you can um, figure out the, the plan of action. You know, because you want others' ideas. You want you want to multiply your brain power, so you'll have um, other uh, other people's input. Okay, so I'm gonna. I just made a little error here. So number four would actually be to plan and execute. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. So there we have it. So I'll go over that. Number one is definitely write your dreams down. And that means get clarity on what it is that you really want out of what do you want in your life. Number two is learn how to communicate your dreams to your team members, which could kind of go with number one. Um, but I, I wrote it down just how you said it. Number three, put your team together. Um, number four is to plan and execute. And Latoya just said, multiply your brain power. Love that. So where are you? Did we lose the audio? No, there, the video. Okay. I'm still here. Do you guys hear me? Do you hear me? Yeah, I could hear you. It just went out like the video probably went out for like two seconds. So that comes to the end of the show for tonight. And I want to thank everyone who is on and our guest, Richard, thank you so much for your time. I am thank you for honored. having me. Thank you for having me. And uh, guys out there, you know, Oh, I think we lost the audio. And Richard? I gave you some nuggets. And, uh... So I think we lost him there. Not sure if he can hear me. You know, pass it on and let's raise each other. Hey, Richard, we lost you there in terms, yeah, we lost him. He's gone. But I want to thank everyone. It is now officially past an hour. And thank you for hanging in there. 
with us. And I hope that there was something that you can take away and apply in your lives right away. And thank you. And go out there and design your lifestyle. Live on purpose. Live your dreams and your passions. Don't live by default. Thank you all and have a great night. See you next Thursday live, 8 o'clock here. I watch out for the post on Facebook. Okay? Thank you guys. Good night.